Hey, welcome to the Rock Life Podcast. Again, a ministry here of the Rock Church and World Outreach Center. Uh, we are so excited as on this podcast, we are going through our more, most recent sermon series. My name is Antonio. I have the privilege of being one of the pastors here. And over the last couple of weeks, we have been going, like I said, through our current sermon series. And we are on the topic of marriage. As you can see, I have a new guest here with me today. Pastor Paul, he's not new uh, to the church or anything like that, but he's new on our podcast. And we're going to hear from him about this past weekend as we delved into part two of the series and the last four parts of the verses here of the commandments to the husband. So our topic today is going to be over this part two. I want to open us up by reading the scriptures in which we pulled out these topics. Again, thank you for tuning in over the first uh, couple of days of this release. Uh, be sure to share the news, write your comments, your questions on there. Like I said, we'd love to be able to serve you better. So if you guys have your questions or things that you had uh, in the sermon, we can do our best to try to respond to those. And again, this is supposed to be supplemental. So be sure to get here, stream the, the weekend message if you are not nearby. Otherwise, come in for the weekend, and then this is going to be supplemental to you. This is going to be like one of those bonus episodes where, hey, if, if you could raise your hand in the middle of the sermon, what kind of questions you would ask, that's kind of the heart or the design behind this podcast, these conversations. So it is a conversation that we want to, inter or we want to welcome you into, invite you to be a part of with us. But that being said, Ephesians chapter 5 is where we're basing the series. Uh, the last a few verses here, starting 529. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as the Lord does the church. For we are members of his body, of his, I'm sorry, we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and two shall become one flesh. Again, we're talking about the last four of the eight commandments to the husband. Welcome, Pastor Paul. How are you doing today? I'm doing good, man. I'm, these chairs are amazing. I'm yeah, like, this brings comfy, the huh? anointing, bro. <laughs> I like it. I'm glad we're not recording in my office. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but no, I'm doing, I'm doing great. I, I love the topic. I think Pastor has done a great job so far in this series. And so it'll be fun just to talk about it. Yeah. yeah. Well, sh uh, give us an introduction to yourself, meaning your family life. We know you've been a pastor here for a long time. You're one of our teaching pastors on weekends and Wednesday nights. You're no stranger uh, to our church family. Uh, but give us an introduction about who you are, Pastor. Absolutely. Uh, I'm Pastor Paul Marunier from the Dominican Republic, a little island in the Caribbean. And so I came to The Rock uh, almost 20 years ago. Um, I came to The Rock, and so God has blessed. It's amazing. My wife and I started the Spanish ministry, Iglesia La Roca. Um, we're gonna, it's going to be 18 years wow. this June since we started that. It's it just a, a great, great blessing that the Lord has given us. Um, let me see. I'm married. I have three children. I've been married for 23 years now. Um, and uh, married three kids, one in college, one about to graduate high school, another yeah. one in a couple of years, and I uh, just love doing life here. Yeah, um, on the marriage side of it, uh, some of you guys might not know, but my wife is actually Anglo, uh, American Anglo, and so... White for those uh, of you. Yes, yes, <laughs> yeah, that too. It's okay. <laughs> uh, but she speaks Spanish, and so her parents were missionaries in South America, and that's how we connected. Um, and so there was a lot of assumptions in marriage just because she spoke Spanish, that I assumed that we were also culturally aligned, mm, right. and, and that is not the case. And so when yeah. we talk about marriage, we, her and I always bring out that idea of, because uh, we're going to talk about leave and cleave, yeah. and how do, you, how do you go through that process, even involving wow. the cultural aspect of what you do in marriage. So yeah. that's kind of my story. Yeah, yeah. I, lo I love that dynamic, and so I'm looking forward to kind of pulling out some of those insights for those, because we have so many people... Again, not everyone even watching or listening is married, right. um, but maybe many of you are. Uh, there are many blended families. There are many people, right. uh, single parent households that maybe have their, the, their child's parent is of a different culture or ethnic background or just a different understanding. Uh, so these are all great insights. And so we're excited to have your viewpoints on these things, but ultimately what the word says. And so we get right. excited that we get to help recap some of these things. So that being said, um, you know, the, the number five or one of the first points Pastor Dan covered, I think there's, it's so robust, um, but he was talking about cherish and place great value in your life. So the commandment is husbands cherish and place great value. We just read in verse 29 that we, we cherish our own bodies. And so we are in turn supposed to cherish 
our spouse. I know I was talking with you, Pastor Powell, about uh, this book that I love. Um, uh, uh, it's a, a marriage book by Gary Thomas, actually called Entitled Cherish. And he opens up with this beautiful illustration uh, of, of cherishing your spouse. And he equates it to a ballerina, right, in the ballet. Oftentimes you go to the ballet and the star of the show is the female ballerina. But oftentimes there is a, ma- a male, a man ballet dancer who's um, job, it is essentially, I don't know dance very well, so if you're a dancer, please don't be offended. But from my understanding and from the point of the illustration from the book was, the man's job is to blend out into the background and really highlight the woman with their lifts, with the turns, with uh, the, their partnership. While symbiotic, the idea is to highlight right. the woman. So he's taking this illustration of this ballerina dancer and is charging husbands to cherish their wives in this way, to lift them up, to encourage them, to place them in the right angles, in the right light, uh, to have them be highlighted. And I think right. one of the biggest for us as men is our ego sometimes. But one of the lessons that I take from that is really, if they're a star and everyone stands up and gives them the ovation, they won, but you won. Right. And our, when our spouse, when our wives win, we win. And um, so that idea of cherishing was so powerful. And any thoughts on this? Absolutely. Thing Look, I'll do it as long as I don't have to wear tights. I'm yeah. good to go. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to skip that. But um, no, back to the serious point. Uh, it's a church podcast. Yeah. Um, I would say that, uh, you know, in that sense, it's so interesting when Pastor Dan says, hey, why don't you pray to see what the Lord would speak to you at the end of the service? That was the one point the Lord highlighted to me out of all of it. Yeah. And the angle that the Lord highlighted to me in that sermon was, you know, a lot of times men, we like the conquest. And mm-hmm. so the fight to get our wives is always just that process. We're, you know, in love with them. But once you've settled into the relationship, to the marriage, you can um, very easily settle in a way that you no longer cherish. Yeah. And so my wife and I, we have a, we've had our differences. We had a rough patches in our marriage. But I think the last few years, we've kind of found a groove and yeah. we're in a good place in our marriage. And it's very easy to back down from yeah. flowers or cards or date nights or anything like that. Yeah. So it's like, you know, so the Lord highlighted that to me like, hey, man, right. like you got to still put the F out because yeah. the idea is when you lift them up, when you put them in a place of enjoyment, in a place of they feel secure, then you're not hunting anymore to kind of get their love. They already love you. You're yeah. secure in their relationship. But that does not mean that you don't appreciate the person within the relationship. Right. And I think that's what tends to happen with the cherish option. Um, you know, it's just that idea on the guys that we tend to kind of there's no there's no fight. And mm-hmm. so because there's no fight, now we're kind of in maintenance mode. And maintenance mode is very complicated. Yeah. Um, if I would equate it this way, when you buy a car, you're so excited, you wash it, you all these things. But maintenance is boring. You have oh, to track the miles. You have to show up every six months, make yeah. sure the oil is changed. But the reality is the car will last longer if you maintain it. Yeah. Um, and so everybody tells you, take it in, get it there. Repair. Otherwise, what happens is you drive it with no maintenance, and then you have to spend four grand in repairs. Right. And that's marriage. If you don't oh, do on. that, <laughs> you're going to have to spend some money in repair. Yeah. Um, but you could have done the you oil like change. Nights on the couch. Yeah. <laughs> Meals that you had to cook for yourself. That's right. <laughs> All of it. Uh, but yeah. if you spend the $70, 80 $100 in yeah. maintenance every six months, then yeah. your car will last. Yeah. And so uh, that cherished aspect, I think, was very important. But g- yeah. great, great illustration. Well, you know, Pastor uh, Dan talked about uh, the point that he brought up. I wrote it down. Highlight what you like about her. not ju- And that mm. includes not just what she does for you. Right. And it reminded me, just this week I was watching a show... And it was this sappy moment, and the guy is t- talking about this girl that he misses, and he was just like, you know, I just love her because whenever I did this, she did this for me. And it was talking about all the ways he loved her because of what she did for him. Mm. And, you know, what Pastor Dan talked about was my cherishing is about who she is, not right. just about how she makes me feel. Correct. And I think many of the times we think, oh, yeah, I'm... I'm giving her words of affirmation and her words are like, thank you for doing this for me. Or how, and really, we are still at the center of it. Right. And so how can we get outside of ourselves, men, husbands, to value them and cherish who they are, right. their quirks, their personalities, the things that they're good at, Correct. the things in their career, that their ambitions, how do I celebrate and cherish them? You know, right. it's like 
hey, I love how you are aiming to get that promotion at work. I love how you, my wife's a teacher. I, I love how she cares for her students and she comes home and uh, tells me stories about how she, her students are improving and their test scores are rising. And I, so when I want to cherish her, I, I, I don't always do this. She might watch. She probably won't. Let's be real. But, <laughs> but we're going to get caught lying in this podcast at some point. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but I, I just, I, so I have to remind myself when I cherish her, I have to talk about right. the things that she is good at and not yeah. just, you know, I love you because you love me or right. I love you because you wash my clothes or whatever. You know, what, those, those kind of things. So really, make them the highlight that ballerina illustration is yeah just I, that's a so brilliant great. point i think uh when when pastor m frames it that way and i just bring it up i think it's very important to consider that like sometimes i'll tell my wife and remind her, hey you're a great mom yep like has nothing to do with me i just see how she's with children and so you're great you're a great mom and sometimes uh they feel insecure in that area of their life with yeah. all the pressure so highlight that they mm -hmm. are a good mom and what areas of yeah. their motherhood is you know attracted to you like hey thank you for taking care of our kids like that that it's so amazing to me, you know, right. um, because what we tried to do is we tried, um, and Pastor Diego talked a little bit about this in our men's breakfast. You didn't attend. Uh, right. Look it up. I don't know if we'll post it or record it, but, um, you know, we tend to remember the good things of someone else did or, right. oh, my wife is not a good, I wish she would cook that way. Instead of focusing on that aspect, focus on the ones you do have right. um, and highlight those and overcome those things in cherishing. So, for example, my, my wife likes to shop, but she's very good with money. She's yeah. not... So then, it, so then instead of creating a fight, then I just I just tell her like, hey, we you you can go TJ Maxx here's an X amount. Yeah. I think we can we can splurge to this month on this, yeah. and that is just her joy. So right. without having to show up, sort of, oh, I went shopping, kind of embarrassed. Like, don't do that. Like, you're we're part of this process. Yeah. Um. So whatever that may be for your wife, if it's you know, hey, she always cooks, then. We're going to go out to eat one day, so that's you good. don't have to do that. Yeah. Um, and thank you for all the stuff you do. Right. So. No, that's great. I, lo I love that. Well, that, that, was, that was a good one, Cherish. Um, number six on the overall uh, was, and this is the one that you were talking about, mm. uh, the taking spiritual responsibility and the way that looks like is leaving the past behind. I know that one kind of took some air out of the room over the right. weekend. Because uh, that can mean a lot of different things. Right. But really, he went on, and like you mentioned, the term leave and cleave comes from that. Uh, and one of the things that stood out to me about what he said was remove yourself from the old way of thinking. Yeah. Right? Because, and he brought up, we are in California, and so leave and cleave, that doesn't necessarily have to mean the pressure of moving far away from your family or even having to leave the same home sometimes for whatever reason, maybe even sick parents or whatever. Um, and so there's no shame and maybe you're still in this under the same household, but outside of those things, it's a mentality. It's mm. not, you know, well, I have yeah. my mom or I have my old way of thinking that still reigns over how I'm going to lead my home as a husband. Right. Um, I, I think of one thing that I, I made sure I noted here, but I know that you had a thought here. So go ahead. On, yeah. No, on... I mean that, that whole concept is so huge especially i mean i'm sure all families may have that but on the latino culture which you you and i come from um again that may apply to another culture too but um you know it seemed simpler in um in my wife culture to mm -hmm. disconnect a little more from family than for me now the so for us it was hard and easy it was easy right. because i moved away from my house right. right so i have no family in the united states or at least i didn't back then now i do um, but so that was, that was in the process where it was easy for me to integrate myself into my wife's family. The yeah. pro issue came two ways. One, when my mother, uh, moved with us mm -hmm. before she passed away, that was one issue, how to create that separation, yeah. um, of still maintaining Tracy as, uh, important in the household without, you know, in my culture, the veneration of the mom is so huge. Yeah. And so it was very easy to kind of default into giving certain authority to my mother within the household when it was Tracy's. And so that was definitely an issue we had to deal with in that process. And even when Pastor Jim was talking about leaving your past, like both her and I, we had our past. And so um, you know, in the conversations we had prior to marriage, we were honest with each other, and then we had to move forward from there. Right. Um, and those things were very important um, because they will shape how you 
how you react to each other in marriage. And um, it's so crucial for, for us not to do that, for us to be careful on how we judge. Once you move forward, it's like you've got to move forward, yeah. you know, and really separate what it was to who you guys are now, Yeah, for sure. Well, I think a dynamic to that can really pose a challenge to a marriage is, you know, talking about this re- removing your old way of thinking. Um, is that when you surround yourself people who are essentially to use modern day vernacular, who are just going to co-sign on how you feel, mm. right? Or who basically will affirm your thoughts, challenges, frustrations. So really the only people that you might get insight or, or feedback from are people who think you're in the right. So right. then no one who will really challenge you to say, hey, no, you that's just because your parents did it that way, you, you can't do that. But if you're just asking your siblings or your buddies at work or people that kind of come from the same right. dynamic atmosphere, then yeah, you're, you're going to continue to just, you'll dig your heels in the ground right. when really you should maybe be, you know, if you have people around you that will challenge and not just have the old way of thinking for you. Right. And I think that's the important thing. And that's a whole other subject of, of finding good godly friends or sound advice are people who will be honest with you with these things. And But that's part of leaving the old way behind because right. my old way is the old group, the old, the old thoughts that might just stay as the most prevalent in your life. Right. Absolutely. Look, um, you know, on that topic, there's so many angles we, we can go with. And it is so crucial for people not to do that. This comes in conversation and it'll come in the process of talking. It, Pastor Nina said it well, not one family should dominate how things go. Like mm-hmm. in our family, we ended up settling when we moved from Las Vegas to California we ended up selling that we do Thanksgiving with her family and then the Christmas with our family. And yeah. we've done that for years. We right. don't travel. We make the effort, go be with my in-laws. But Christmas is for us here. We stay yeah. around here. And so we've done that. We've kind of balanced that out and how we do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's just things like that where there's that give and go in the process. Yeah. And um, and it's very important to do that. But um, I want to highlight an issue. And I don't know why I'm bringing that up, but it's a modern vernacular. Maybe it speaks to people. Sometimes when we're in a... Um, when we're in a church environment, we don't understand what people outside are actually talking. And one of the things I deal with um, in, in marriage counseling a lot of times comes with the word, which you probably heard, is called body count. Mm. And so not a lot of people want to talk about this thing, right. but in relation, these are things that can derail people. And yeah. what I mean by body count, if you don't know, is people tend to talk about how many partners have you had right. and why are we in this relationship and you're married to this. Yeah. Yeah. And so these are conversations that people are having that could derail their relationship because... Yeah. They are on. They need to one see the restoration of the Lord in people's life, yeah. and two, I don't know how much benefits you digging in people's past. Now, right. these are important conversations in marriage. But if you're married and you haven't had that conversation, right. you're already backwards, right? right? So, right. so what what would benefit you at this point to do that? I'm not sure how that helps. Right. Um, you can definitely be some honest. Uh, there yeah. should be some honesty in it. If you didn't have the conversation prior, Trace and I did, right. um, and it was very important. And right. That's why you know. So just for clarity, you're talking about sexual history of each absolutely. partner, absolutely. Right? Yeah. Sexual history of each partner, um, family relationship. All these things are part of the process of disconnecting right. to your past. Yeah. I always tell a story. Uh, Tracy and I had some friends. I will mention their names, but they got married um, before we did. Right. Um, and so these friends were awesome. We loved them. We yeah. were part of their wedding. Um, and it, it was so sad to see this process. And this is a process that play out. He was a guy who, his culture, um, they were, uh, I believe he was Samoan. Um, they were very family oriented, right, right. right? But he didn't put certain boundaries. Right. And so, and she was Anglo. She was uh, from a white family and her dad was a pastor. Yeah. And um, they were always over. Yeah. We always hung out together. But when they married, we understood there had to be separation. Well, they come back from the honeymoon, and his brother's already sleeping in the apartment. Mm. Like the next day. Yeah. And the guy stays there over a week. Yeah. And so this pattern started to happen where they were never able to settle. Within a year, they were divorced. Mm. And that, that's a story that breaks our heart. They yeah. were our friends. Yeah. But all that happened is they did not apply leave and cleave. Right. At some point... Yeah. You don't want to abandon your friends. You don't want to disappear. But some yeah. separation needs to be created in order for you to bond to her right. and for her to bond to, bond to you. Yeah. It has to happen. Otherwise, there's no strength in the marriage. Right. I know there's a lot of different definitions. The term boundaries has really caught a lot of 
uh, traction in recent years. It seems like in within the church, right. um, and, and there are there is healthy boundaries. Uh, but I think one of the things, and you mentioned it, Pastor Dan brought up, was don't let your family dominate your marriage. Correct. Essentially, so you know maybe wherever you land on what do- boundaries means, but land on them. But nowhere when you do land, it shouldn't look like any one family Correct. dominating the language, uh, the the family Dynamic. life right. schedule. Right. This looks at finances. Right. If it's, all these things can be worked through, but they have to be done in agreement. I'm sure in this couple, had there been a conversation, and there has there has to be agreement. Otherwise, right. it's a domination. I'm saying. And then we get into this, well, in my culture, we just do this. Correct. And then that's when, that's, you know, that's a lot of different things can happen there. But I think you bring up a very poignant point um, about that because those, they, they, they're uncomfortable conversations. Correct. And they're not, uh, because not everyone goes through them, it's not easy to bring them up. But they're also very real because they are a lot of times at, uh, at the detriment of people's pain and, right. and so on and so forth. Yeah. To, to close the, this point, there's a quote uh, Pastor Dan mentioned, deal with your past or it'll deal with you. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and I thought that was good. And I think that's important for all of us. We got to deal with some of these things. And uh, we'll go into that a little bit more in one of the yeah, other points. I like that. Um, so the next one was operate and live as one. Operate hmm. and live as one. <laughs> as I was taking notes, I got this image of, you know, kind of like cholos walking at the mall, you know, like <laughs> one stride, you know, like the guy behind, like they're just kind of like, you know, just succinct. You guys know like the cholo walk, right? But, you know, operating and living as one. And, and again, why is that a commandment to the husband? Because mm. the husband, again, is setting the tone, setting the culture right. that we're not going to live our separate lives, that we're just domestic partners, or we're not just living as roommates, right? But we are going to operate and live as one, that we are including one another in decisions, in our lives, you know, whether or not you have children, uh, whether or not uh, maybe you could be empty nesters or you could not have children, um, but there needs to be that sense that you are operating and living as one. So that way you don't yeah, uh, fall out of love when it doesn't make sense. Yeah. You, you know, uh, I believe both Pastor Jim and Deborah and Pastor Dan and Jess have taught on this uh, idea of covenant. Mm-hmm. And um. So leading to oneness. So the Apostle Paul talks about oneness, um, obviously in the in the sexual physical part, which is right. part of marriage, and and that's why Paul says you do not give your members to a prostitute because don't you realize that your soul is becoming intertwined? Yeah. yeah. So so this is the depth of oneness. It's yeah. not only a soul matter of coming together. Then you have the living as one, and that is so profound too. Yeah. Like. Uh, but the phrase that we have in our culture today is ride or die. Yeah. Right? The yeah, idea yeah. is, hey, man, this yeah. person's with me ups right. and down. And yeah. so we do that. Um, and that's great. But creating oneness is very difficult in the process yeah. of how we manage our money yeah. and how we do this. And uh, Pashan alluded to this in the message, but I, I also face that in counseling. And, you know, every family has a different dynamic. It's not a dynamic I recommend. Um, but when people have uh, separate accounts and, right. oh, you pay the light bill, I pay the phone bill. You yeah. pay this, I do that. And so... After a wife's pastor, I lost my job, and now I'm behind on my light bill. I'm thinking, you're a married woman. What are you talking about? Right. Oh, because the light bill is my responsibility. That's nonsense. Right. That's absolutely nonsense. Yeah. And so in, in counseling, I always say this. Unless there is a real issue of money management problem, yeah. um, you have to become one. It, so the, let me just run it this way. Five areas that I tell every couple to work on three or four years, um, but five in, uh, obviously in-laws, sexual, financial, spiritual, slash emotional, let's call Mm -hmm. it that way. So these areas are all part of becoming one. Right. And one of the things I tend, um, when God called Abraham, he said that Abraham took his wife and possessions. Mm -hmm. And I always say this, because some people get mad at me, but um, possessions are part Right. of their relationship. Right. Oh, you don't love, you know, love has nothing right. to do with money. Right, right. I was like, oh, yes, it does. <laughs> yeah, if you don't have it, the, com- the right. it gets complicated. You right. still love them, right. but it gets complicated. Right. And that's right. part of oneness, you know? Sure, yeah. So I, I don't know if that makes sense, but yeah. No, that, you know, I, I work with young adults, so oftentimes we don't have anything. When, you, <laughs> when the young adult, you know, when you get married as a young adult, yeah. there's not, but you're right, there is the dynamic of 
all of a sudden what's mine is mine, what's yours is mine, or, or yours is yours, and, right. and that's not really operating in this uh, as one, you're not. You're you, so really. You're. You're. We see it in scripture, but you're not. You're only serving yourself. And I think that's again from what we saw in Ephesians five, is that you are treating your wife as you would treat yourself. That's correct. You wouldn't starve yourself. That's You good. would not get your. If you needed something, you would not. You clothe yourself. Uh, you clothe yourself. You take care of yourself. Uh, if you need a haircut, you go get a haircut. But then you don't want to let your wife do. You know so. Um, I, I think those are the challenges that Absolutely. men obviously are facing, and that so when this is when we talk about this expression as a commandment to a husband, and, and that's why we're we're setting the tone. Yes, this is for both husbands and wives. Right. We, we understand that, um, but we are looking as to the spiritual heads, as the one who helps set the tone or set the the, the home culture and how this is going to be done. I think Pastor Dan mentioned um, the the operating in a way where you're, there's a communication, there's a follow-up, there's a check-in. And those are all ways that it, that it looks like to be one. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's crazy. When, so I'm, gra- I'm glad you brought up the young adult aspect because a, a lot of people see us now 20 years later in a better financial situation, all this stuff. But when Tracy and I got married, we had nothing. Mm-hmm. We had nothing. We had a, an apartment that was 600 square feet. It was one bedroom, right. a kitchen, and a small living room. That's all we had. I had a pregnant wife yeah. and a job making nine fifty an hour, oh, yeah. and but we understood we were in it together. Right. And sometimes when there's a, a a fight in it, it's very important. But I learned some profound lessons through these things. Number one, I did not realize how expensive makeup and hair is on the women's <laughs> side, but but right. it is it important to them. Right. So so here's here's a guy mentality. I love you the way you are. You don't need to put on makeup. Exactly, like yeah. let's just go. Yeah. Like you're my girl, right? Yeah. Yeah. But that's to her. That's like. Right. I know. I'm glad you like me, but I need to like myself too. Right. No, that's so true. having to make that switch, that right. was wild. That yeah. was really hard for me. Um, you know, seeing all the needs of the house, but having to understand, hey, this is something that she loves and right. she likes to do. And and my wife has never been like, you know, crazy. She's not doing three hundred dollar hair things. Right. None, nothing like that. Yeah. But um, but it's important to see those things, and that's why Peter says, let not let not your uh, your look, your outward appearance, be of ostentatious. Uh, dressing and right. in, in those days they were putting gold right, in their hair right, and doing right. all these things and Peter's like you guys are over the top right. like that's not what Christ well, wants for the from intent you. So, to attract to, yeah, correct right to find value value yeah. in that and so so you know as a young adult I'm like just go for it if you guys are committed to each other you know Tracy and I we were both 26 I was 26 she was about to turn 26 so um, you know when we got married and so we just we went for it but we didn't start at the top we we fought together yeah. through the process and. You know, we didn't hold back on having babies because we didn't have money. I hear right. that conversation a lot today. Yeah. Nowadays, it's like if you trust God and you believe there's just there's got to be a fight in you to put those things into the process, right. into Absolutely. the mix. So yeah, no, that's great, Pastor Paul. I'm I'm really enjoying. We're we're flying through this, aren't we? Uh, and, but this is good. I'm enjoying it. Hopefully, again, if you guys have questions, be sure to put them in there. If you're offended by Pastor Paul, go ahead and write him a letter. <laughs> <laughs> I don't uh, care. <laughs> <laughs> Put it in, file it under T. Yes, you know, there you go. <laughs> uh, the last one, enjoy being united. Enjoy mm. being united. And again, obviously right away, and Pastor Dan brought up this enjoy, it, it, uh, it does speak to the physicality, to, to intimacy. Enjoy intimacy. Right. Enjoy being united. But it also speaks to so much more. Um, you know, you, I, I, you think of, uh, a husband that actually enjoys being with their wife, Correct. right? You know, or, or talking on the phone. I think, you know, there was coming up, there was almost like a man, you're just sprung, you're simping, you're always over there. We said there's a term we used to say, <laughs> cupcaking. You're just over there in the corner. Like, you know, you know, there's the guy, you're right. out with your friends. There's the guy, like, oh, what? Yeah, like, <laughs> like you already talked to her, just come hang out. Right. But imagine as, as a grown man being able to be secure and actually liking your right. wife, enjoying being around her. And I think that's what this commandment is. Find yourself in a place that you enjoy being around your spouse. Right. And how much richer and fuller will your wife be? Because at the end of the night, you don't go home with those guys. Right. Exactly. right? And you want to yeah. go be one, but you didn't want to enjoy it. And I think that's so many times, and I'm sure in our, in our counseling, I know in your time of counseling, in my marriage counseling, there's the element of, well, we want the intimacy, but there's not. they're missing out on the connection that might bring... Uh, a fuller time of intimacy, right. uh, that your needs are both being met. Instead of how my needs can be met and how you can meet my needs, 
how intimacy can be fulfilling for both husband right. and wife and is intended to be fulfilling for both husband Absolutely. and wife. Absolutely. Um, you know, I had some friends that would, uh, uh, in Spanish, they call it, hey, la grua, which means, hey, the tow truck is calling you. <laughs> and um, so, I mean, they're going to pull you out of the club, yeah, right. pull you out of the group, yeah, right, yeah. Ever, right, out of where you're at. Um, and so, <laughs> the, so, so that thought, that idea is kind of crazy to me, but um, I was like, I think there was a meme or something, just a pregnant lady and her shirt says, I just wanted a back rub. Um, <laughs> and so, um, so what happens all times is people, only, right. especially men, we equate intimacy right. to only sexual relations. Right. The, the idea is the oneness factor of it. Yeah. And it's, it's very interesting because my wife and I, I don't know, it's a while back, we just, we got to talking and we talked for hours and I was just, you know, as a guy, you kind of checked out, but she right. wanted to talk. So we enjoyed talking. And then she tells me like, oh my gosh, you have no idea. This makes me want you and all this stuff. I'm thinking, what the heck? I'm exhausted from talking, lady. I don't need none of that stuff. Listen, yeah, I know, huh? So, so but the women connect differently right. they, because you share your emotions, yeah. you open your heart, yeah. you let it into your mind. Um, that creates a different connection. So right. I, I think that if I could give an advice on oneness from a guy reaching a woman would, would be, um, you know, for us to arrive at this, at this sexual intimacy is very simple and very right. easy, but in order to really connect and, and with your wife in that sense, I right. think, uh, the openness to who you are, it's going to be important. And then yeah. you might be a guy that, man, I don't talk a lot. I don't share a lot, but if you let her into some aspect from time to time of, yeah. of what's up and what you did, even if it's, you know, whatever, or just ask her and let her talk. Right. If you don't want to talk, at least be a part, uh, active participant in the listening process. Yeah. You know, those things. My wife likes to talk spiritual things. Actually, Pastor Jan, Pastor Jessica and, and Trace are kind of the same. You know, I come home and she's listening about the end times and all this stuff. I'm thinking, <laughs> I barely made it out of the office. I don't need to know the world's going to end tomorrow, <laughs> right? So, uh, but, you know, they like that, that yeah. kind of thought process. So those are things that a lot of times, you know, it'll be great. Uh, yeah. I'll share a story of uh, we had a, a guy, a couple in La Roca many years ago, and, and he's a wonderful man. And um, but his wife first became a Christian, and she used to come to church. He was not. He was living right. in the world. He was completely out of it. And she was really mad. She was telling me, "What do I need to do? He wants me to go to the river on Sunday and and did that." And and I don't apply this to everybody, right. but I felt in that case for them, this was important. I said, "Look, if once a month he wants to go to the river, and right. you're here three other Sundays, right. go to the river with him." Right. And, and as a pastor, that might sound crazy yeah. and this and that. But what happened is, once again, what Peter said, that he was won by the kindness right. of him. She became interested also in what he needed right. from time to time. Now, it might be that a couple says, well, pastor, he wants to go every Sunday. Well, that's a little different. Right. He's pulling you away from your mm -hmm. Christian walk. What you're doing is, I'm sure it's an issue. Eventually, she won him over. Right. He became a Christian. He's been right. a Christian for the last 14 years of his right. life. Right. Uh, he's walking with the Lord. His ch Their children are walking with right. the Lord. Um, and all it took was a little bit of interest into who you are, into oneness. Because otherwise right. people feel like, oh, so the only thing we can do is what you want. Right. Um, and that can go both ways. So we might be addressing yeah. a, a, a wife or a couple that one is a right. different, is not a Christian. Yeah. Those things we have to look at too. Yeah. Well, and I, and I think, you know, I thought about it this way. This is not what you got to do to get your wife into bed, right? Like it's not, right. like, you know, <laughs> a good in, point. In, in, in other words, it's not like, um, oh, I'm listening today, and oh, so I just have to act like I like, <laughs> act like I like what she's right. saying. <laughs> act like I'm interested. Let her talk. Now, can we go to bed? I think because that that defeats the the purpose of what we're talking. Actually, right. enjoying each other, right. and so it's the because that that means they have to change. I never have to change because what might happen is like the example you just brought up, where this wife ended up finding herself. I want to take interest in what you take interest right. in. So, oh, I'm going to take interest in what you take interest in, not let me act interested Correct. so that you can now be interested in what I'm interested in. Correct. Because it, if you th that's just, it's not going to work that way. And I think I can see God's design in that because it ultimately brings us closer together. It, just as intimacy is designed to bring us closer together, yep. it, in this, what it takes to make intimacy happen that's is, right. is bringing us closer together. So it's all a plan. It's all a, a mirror of intimacy with Christ. And yeah. I think... Again, talking about these commandments and why they're important, and we see these eight commandments, and we've gone through them, and the challenge to husbands, 
to introduce this into and own these. Yeah. As these are, this is my job as a husband. I'm going to do them yeah. instead of looking at, all right, I'm going to do my part. Now you better go do yours. Correct. I'm, I'm going to own these and I'm going to do them well. Yeah. And again, for this last one specifically in, in, in enjoyment in the unification, enjoyment yeah. in, in each other's time, it really is a beautiful and full marriage. And I think he said it. There's nothing better than a great marriage. Correct. And nothing worse than a bad marriage. Absolutely. It's just the weight of, a, of an unhealthy marriage, the weight of heavy seasons. And I've shared with you, and I know right. that I've, and this is not a secret. I, I talked to my wife, you know, there's been seasons of hard times yep. in our marriage. And, and, oh gosh, that's such an ugly, heavy feeling. Correct. Getting work is hard to do. Uh, loving people is hard to do. Loving right. your children and friends is hard to do. But when you're in a great marriage, when you're yeah. thriving, man, everything, the, 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 what is it called? The, the, bright, the blues are brighter, right. the food tastes better. Uh, and so, and I believe that that's what God would call Correct. us all to. And again, if you're single watching this, like, you know, th- there is fullness and richness in our relationship. Yeah. And there are things that we can do. And so, I think the assumption is that great marriage sort of happens. Mm-hmm. Nothing great no, just happens. Perfect. Um, and so there's work. I, I follow Elon Musk, as most people do, and I, I realize how much this guy works. You right. know, and many people can say, oh, my gosh, you know, he, um, but this guy has revolutionized just like Steve Jobs did for, uh, you know, the phone industry and all this stuff. These guys worked really hard at what they do at their craft, and their craft is not eternal. Yeah. The relationship, that connection, that, that oneness is so important. So work at the craft, and yeah. that, I think that's part of these commandments. It's going to take some work in our lives and our decision. So yeah, so good, Pastor. Any other closing thoughts over these commandments, uh, over the ones that we covered today or the upcoming weeks? Yeah, man. I, I think the the last four, if I can sum it up, at least from what I capture from what Pastor Dan taught, would be pay attention to who she is. Yeah. If good. I if I can summarize it that way, that's pay good. attention to who she is, um, and find those things. If you can find those things, I think you will be able to have tools in your hands. Yeah. To grow your marriage. That's good. Pay attention to who she is because you want yourself met. You want your needs met, meet yeah. your needs. That's Absolutely. so good. Well, thank you again, guys, for tuning in. Uh, so wonderful to be with you. See you on the weekends or stream in, tune in. Again, spread the word. We're here to be a resource, a tool for you. God bless you guys.